Hi class, it's Bill Berry with another video in the JavaScript series. We are getting into and getting ready to write JavaScript that is more interesting to solve some more realistic problems, which we'll you know continue to do throughout the quarter. But before we do that, I do want to talk briefly about algorithm design tools and a little bit about the JavaScript workflow. Mostly I'm focusing here on the Java on the, some design tools. The point here is that programming is more about thinking than it is about typing and there are going to be problems that are going to appear to you to be complicated enough that you shouldn't just start typing them into your code editor and this is true whatever language this is true regardless whether you're an advanced student or a beginning student there are problems that are harder than your brain can kind of immediately know what to do with and so what do you do when you run into those kind of situations and we have a couple of different tools to talk about this is going to be very useful as we work in class because when there are problems and challenges that are going to be complicated, we're going to talk through together how we can get our brains wrapped around what needs to happen in the right and in what order. Uh, that turns out to be one of the biggest challenges for beginning programmers is to figure out where to put the right uh, the code that you need. And if you don't understand the algorithm, if you don't have a plan for where things go, you really shouldn't start typing yet because uh, watching students just move things around in their program just like try this here, try this there, that means they haven't really understood the way the thing's supposed to work. So what do you do to kind of get your brain wrapped around that? Well, let's take a look at a couple of options here. There are two basic ways that uh, we can teach you to work through algorithms, and algorithms are just a set of steps to solve a specific problem. So it's nothing fancy, it's just how do you approach the problem? Well, there are two basic ways that are very typical. One is called a flowchart, and a flowchart is really good because it's a visual representation, and it also is useful in scenarios outside of programming. You'll see flowcharts to describe all sorts of workflows in all sorts of places. You'll see them posted by the copier at your business, or you'll see them uh, posted to uh, to either even consumer-facing sites that show what you're supposed to do and in what order. So flowcharts are really cool, and they're visual, and they're easy to understand, but they're kind of a pain to create. So I wouldn't use traditional tools. You know, if you try to do this with a, with a, a typical tool, it's kind of hard, but there are some great tools that are free that are out there. The one that I like at the moment that's free is called draw.io, and you can see the link here. And this will let you create flowcharts for free. So if you like flowcharts, great, but use a tool because it'll make your life a lot easier. So we won't cover that, but it's just an information for you. The second way to do it that requires a lot less overhead and investment is called pseudocode. Pseudocode means fake code. It's something that you write down in your native language, right in English, for instance, and it's a text-based representation, but it looks kind of like and it flows like a program. So the point of it is is that you can get your ideas organized and in fact you can show it to other people without having to show them code and say do I have this right is this the right kind of flow so it's a great way to discuss your approach without having to get into the details of coding the next step after that of course is turning that algorithm into code but you should only do that once you feel like you've got the right kind of uh, organization and your ideas right so let's take a quick look uh, the other little point with pseudocode is you can write your pseudo code and then you can turn those into program comments later so you don't even feel like you're wasting anything. You can describe the steps and then you can write the code and you've, you've used your pseudocode 100%. All right, so let's look at two examples of these things. Let me grab a little pointer of some kind so that I can uh, look over here. Okay, so this is a flowchart. Flowcharts have very specific symbol shapes to mean certain things. For instance, there's this terminator start and stop symbol at the beginning and end. Great. There's rectangular boxes, and those rectangles represent processes, things that you can do, or steps. So in general, you're going to flow from top to bottom, and you're going to first do this step and then do that step. So you get a different shape for things like questions or decisions that have to be made. So for instance down here you see this diamond and that represents a choice. And so in this case we see that it's asking the question is it working well? And then notice that there's an arrow coming out with the no answer and another arrow coming out with the yes answer. And so you follow the appropriate error, arrow based on the choice. So we can describe the whole workflow of JavaScript the following way. Open the text editor, type or edit your script, save it, then open it or refresh it in the browser, test it and find out how it's doing. Is it working? Is it perfect yet? 
if the answer is yes, then you're done and you can go submit the work. If not, then you come back up here and you edit some more, save it, open a refresh on the browser, and you test again, and you continue to do this again and again until you find out it's working well, and then you are done. Great. So a flowchart is a great way to represent that, and it's easy to, uh, easy to see what's going on. Again, not so easy to create, but it's not the most horrible thing in the world either. It's good to know how to do those for some purposes. Now, another way to describe the same thing is using pseudocode, right? So this is not JavaScript code. It's not Java. It's not Python. It's not anything. It's just English. So in this case, what we do is we use indentation, maybe. I mean, you can make up your own scheme here because it's just English. English. But in this case, I've used indentation to help describe what is part of something else. So we open the text editor and then we repeat the following steps until it is working well. Do all of these things and then once you are done with that, then you submit the work in Canvas. Notice that's outside of this repeated set of statements. So repeat until working well, type and edit, save and test in the browser. So these are two good ways to do things. I'm going to sometimes show you flowcharts. I won't show you how to draw them or anything, but I'll show you flowcharts sometimes. But I'm going to most often use pseudocode. And when we work together in class, we'll do that sometimes to kind of flesh out and make sure that we understand the problem. So that's a little bit of information about uh, just the, the two design uh, algorithm design tools that we'll be talking about or using. Just wanted you to have seen those. Now, in the next video, we're going to move forward and start talking about variables. These are a very key programming concept, a very fundamental one, and that is uh, I need to store some stuff because I, I have it on one line and I need to use it on a future line, so how can I store it in the meantime? So variables are a key concept coming up in the next video, but let's uh, stop this here and then we'll continue in another video. Thanks for watching.